<laughs> Greetings, my excellent friends, and thank you for joining me for, or us, sorry, should I say, for another episode <laughs> of Our Smart, number 24, I think. Uh, I yeah. Think. 24. Go on then. Knock it on, is now. Yeah, knock on the door. <laughs> um, I don't know any rhymes for 20. 20 24 days before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Um. That's it. That's it. Anyway, happy Friday, everyone, if you're watching this on YouTube, and happy Monday to everyone who is listening to this wherever you get your podcast. So, Mark, got to do the classic. How the dickens are you today? Are you okay? I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. I've um, I've got a new garden shed, so <laughs> I'm I'm clearing a lot of this junk out of here to give me more room. So yeah, my my indoor set is going to um, is going to be expanding and changing Thanks. and moving around a little bit. Um, and as you said earlier, as soon as I do that, we'll probably invest in our own um, joint studio somewhere. So. Um, who knows? Who knows? There, there might be changes coming a fourth. Um, but yeah, all is well. Good. Yeah, all is well. Well, have you got to do your weather update? It's been a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, the this weather. Week. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in a hoodie. Uh, I'm in my uh, emotional bolt snap t shirt um, that is available from our spring store by clicking on the link down in the description below. Um, and there's also a 10% um, a off discount code if you watch some of the, uh, the Daily Scoop and Uses, so definitely watch that series. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that weird season where it's really freezing in the morning, but then it's really warm in the afternoon. Um, it, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the wonderful, wonderful season. Um, yeah, good winter old England. Slash winter, spring. awesome, spring, summer, all in one freaking <laughs> day. Anyway, shall we crack on with the question, young Marky Mark? Bring it. What well, questions have we got? Right, we got seven questions. Yeah, but there's a bonus, mm -hmm. baby, which is the best okay. question I think on this week's episode. But we'll get into that later. Uh, so the first Time question. Will tell. Yeah, uh, the first question is from Benjamin. He messaged us. Uh, this was direct on Instagram, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. In in all honesty, I, I have replied to this and we have had a small conversation already, but I just thought it would be interesting to, uh, to throw in. Cool. All right. Sweet. Anyway, he says, hello. Hello, Benjamin. Uh, I've been following you in your YouTube channel for a while. Thank you very much. You better be subscribed. If you're not, uh, please subscribe. Uh, I'm 17 <laughs> uh, years old and he's going to be turning 18 in July. So happy birthday, Benjamin, happy birthday for July. in July. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm certified an advanced open water diver and rescue diver. Awesome. I've also been diving in Omar, Maldives and Cyprus. So far, it just sounds like he's just, you know, flexing yeah, himself. Yeah, just bragging. He's just yeah. bragging. <laughs> yeah, cheers, mate. Nice one. Lucky you. Uh, uh, now I want to, after graduating from high school, work as a dive master for a year. Awesome. Um, as a gap year. Well, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, does this mm -hmm. equipment, and there is a, he, he says it below, so I'll listen yeah, in a yeah, second. Yeah. Uh, uh, does this equipment make sense in your eyes? Uh, you probably still have improvements. Uh, greetings from Germany, uh, Benjamin. So he's looking at the D5, the Blacktech A700, the Hydros Pro, the Scuba Pro Definition 5mm. So that gear mark, is it good? Can he improve it? Does he need all that gear? I mean, the D5, I wouldn't mm. bother, I'll get a Tarek. Uh, the Black Tech A700, I'd get a Tarek. Uh, the Hydros Pro, <laughs> Tarek. Just get eight Tareks and you'll be fine, mate. But no, on, on a serious note. Of, of the mate. two of us, of the two of us, I like the irony that I'm the one who's wearing a Tarek, so. <laughs> Photoshop Tarek here, Sean. I thought you might do that because I'm too lazy. Um, so yeah, so this is get, This is where it gets tricky because we get this asked all the time and it's like, oh, what should I buy? And it is quite tricky to pick dive equipment for someone else uh, on very little information. Um, but as far as, so a Cinto D5, um, a Scuba Pro Blacktech A700 with the Mark 25 first stage, uh, Hydros Pro BCD Scuba Pro again, Scuba Pro Definition 5 mil wetsuit. Um, it's all really nice equipment. Um, and I, I said that to, uh, to Benjamin, and then he came back with, he's been um, sort of talking on forums and they've said that, well, the Sunto, the D5, uh, Sunto are always very conservative, uh, so stay away from that. Mm. The Hydros Pro, you might as well go for a backplate and wing. And um, uh, one thing that I didn't put on the list was he had a, a Scuba Pro DSMB, which is just a, a pretty basic uh, sort of open-ended uh, DSMB. And uh, it's tough because yeah, they'll all do the job. Mm -hmm. I used to teach using a Cinto dive computer. Sure, they're a bit conservative, but 
so many people out there are diving with Sunto computers that you're all going to have the same RGBM or at least similar RGBM algorithm. So you're all going to be having the same dive profile. So yeah, it, it's fine. Okay, it might send you up a few minutes early. Um, it, it's tough. It's it is a good dive computer and it will do the job. Uh, it's watch sized as well, it's color screen, so it is gonna be really easy to use. Um, Blacktech A700 um, regulators, the fanciest of the fancy, um, with carbon fiber front cover and all that. Yeah, uh, most dive masters, they'll probably just use school equipment. Um, if they do have their own, it will be fairly, not basic, but um, sort of simple equipment. This is almost a, a good switch up because if a lot of students, they'll look to their dive master and their instructor as um, this is what I should be sort of aiming for. So if they see you using the, the nicest gear, then they're hopefully gonna invest in sort of more fancy gear, and then the overall industry is gonna benefit because of it. If they see all of the, um, uh, all of the professionals just wearing basic dive equipment that mm. looks all beaten up, they're like, oh, okay, well, I'll just buy like second or third hand stuff off eBay because that's what the professionals are doing. That's all I really need. So actually, yeah. If you can afford it, yeah, beautiful um, sort of regulator, amazing performance. Uh, the Hydrus Pro recreational wing style BCD. Would I dive a backplate and wing setup? So for this, I, I this was in a question a little while back, which is uh, whether we should be teaching with backplate and harnesses, and it's. It's all as long as you can demonstrate the skills to your students effectively. Um, if it was anywhere else, sort of doing a sort of marine research or something like I did, then yes, I'd sort of fully endorse going down that route. Whereas going into more of a teaching role, mm, it, it depends. Um, if you're just dive masting as a, like a guide, then yeah, you can wear almost whatever you want. So it's you do have to bring that into mind. Uh, definition 5mm wetsuit is fine. Uh, and the DSMB, I just said, oh, it's probably worth getting a uh, closed cell just because I prefer those. It's it's tough saying that, yeah, you, mm -hmm. you should do this or you should swap this out for that. Um, it's tough not knowing you personally as well. You know, I can't definitively say like, no, this is exactly what you should be diving with. Um, but it's all good equipment. I can't really fault it for anything. Are there better alternatives? Yeah, but again, it depends on who you are and your diving. So it's it's hard to make those kind of recommendations. Yeah, well, that, that sounds good because he's been doing his research. Um, so mm. yeah, if he's happy and he can afford it, go for it. Because again, if it doesn't work, you're only gonna know that it doesn't work from using it. You know what I mean? You only find what yeah. suits you by going <clears throat> through certain regulators, certain styles of wetsuits, you know, it's very much like mm. hiking and biking gear, you know, you, you got to go through bits and go through different variances to find the right kit for you. That mm. also um, represents your, your job and what you're, what you're doing, especially if you're, you're teaching and training. Mm. Yeah. They're also big, big brands. So mm. You've got Sunto and Scuba Pro. You're going to find them all over the world. Mm. So if you need replacement parts or servicing, uh, yeah. yeah, that's going to be pretty easy. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Hopefully mm. that helps you out, Benjamin, even though you already know the answer because Mark's already spoke about it. But that is a very interesting <laughs> question, though. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, that, that's obviously why we, we, why we put it on there. Anyway, swiftly moving mm. on. Question number two is from Nate. Hello, Nate. Hope you're all of all. Uh, all over well. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm looking <laughs> to get into my first backplate and wing setup. Awesome. Cool. Like everyone else, pretty much is doing this season. Uh, and mm -hmm. I was wondering, do you still need to get your backplate and wing annually serviced, like your regs and BCD? So the reason why I put this in there is I probably already know the answer. But that is a very mm -hmm. interesting point on whether you actually need things serviced or checked over. Uh, yeah, I mean, your your BCD during an annual service, uh, so one thing that they'll, most dive centers should do if they don't is, uh, is they give it a, a bath, uh, they sort of clean the inside, um, but the inflator, some of them you can service, others you just straight out replace. It's, it's a matter of, if it's working, then yeah, it's fine. Uh, so they'll probably give it a clean. But in all honesty, if you have a, um, 
uh, a more sort of technical wing. Nine times out of 10, they just come with a, a basic K style inflator. Uh, <sighs> I know, I, I come across. Of course. Across. Of course. Um, you're, if your inflator uh, looks a bit like that, um, and you can pretty much service it yourself. Um, there's there's a little uh, sort of screw around there, and yeah, as long as you clean up any uh, sort of salt verdigris, anything building up um, sort of in there, and it's moving freely, then it's fine. The the other sort of important thing is just to make sure that the the seals on the uh, on the dump valves are nice and clean. The gasket on that uh, sort of elbow leading to your inflator is uh, sort of clean kill any nasties on the inside of the bag and yeah that's kind of it there's nothing nothing huge that goes into a sort of servicing an inflator uh, they're they're pretty basic compared to a, um, a regulator but you can get them serviced um, yeah. I guess yeah. peace of mind if you wanted to after a couple of yeah. years or whatever yeah it's no harm yeah just give it yeah just give it a good once over but uh, as long as you're um, like washing it and uh, sort of cleaning it between dives, then yeah, you should be fine for quite a while. Cool. Uh, yeah. Again, obviously things are in long uh, in storage. Of state dive scene is just really opening up, and obviously we're just coming into the season. So, if you're going to be diving locally where you normally go on a holiday, um, if you want to help out your local dive centre, if they've got like a cleaning service, like what Mark was just talking about, book. Mm. Book something in, that's really going to help out the, the local industry, definitely. Even if you mm. clean it yourself, like Mark says, if you just want to, you know, even if it's like, I don't know, how much does it normally cost? 20, 30 quid for that sort of service, Mark, off the top of your head? If, if that, it's yeah. normally cheaper than that for a BCD. Yeah. There you go. So, you, you know, 10, 15 quid or whatever it is, it's going to go a long way for them, you know, just mm. giving them a bit of business to definitely do that. Um, but yeah, yeah, if you've got any tips and tricks on, you know, keeping your BCD and obviously your inflator hose clean, let us know in the comments. Maybe we can help each other out. Uh, mm. So the next question is from Emmy Lee, uh, fan of the show, fan of the channel, mm -hmm. regular. Uh, I recently watched your unboxing video of the Aqualung and was uh, intrigued by the compostable plastic, which got me thinking, mm. which that's the bag that it comes in, isn't it? It's the wetsuit. Yeah, yeah. Or the, yeah, the, the what's it is. And wouldn't it be a great idea to do an experiment where you take all different plastics from products you sell and expose them to realistic environmental conditions? Uh, you know, beef, uh, beneath and on top of wet soil into the sea and fresh water, etc. And track how well they actually decompose. Or would this clash with your interests of uh, as a reseller kind of regards? And then they put hashtag Bobbit Worm Love. No, no. Um, I actually have a bag. Um, this is a fourth element. This is uh, cassava starch. Um, so yeah, I can do that. Um, I'll, I'll chop this up and uh, I'll put a few, I'll put like samples in like, yeah, some soil from the back garden, uh, a bit of water, a bit of seawater from the beach, and um, yeah, see how long they take to uh, to decompose over time. That Yeah, that would be quite interesting. Yeah, film um, it, we can make that into a little video. That'd be quite cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll just set up a 24 seven webcam that people can watch. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at this big, that's like um, people watch, um, I know the, the best uh, video that look, they live stream, watch, uh, watch my milk, I'm going to the shop. And okay. the, then they just put the camera on the milk so no one steals the milk <laughs> and then they just leave it on for about three hours. Or watch, help me watch my paint dry. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. No, I mean this, yeah, I mean this says biodegrades in months. Um, I mean that could be 3,000 months, it could be two. Um, but yeah, no, that, that would be quite interesting. I'll, um, I'll see if I can turn that into a video. Uh, of me sort of starting it off and um, and then yeah checking up on them like once a month or something mm. until they do disappear yeah yeah because yeah, a lot of the stuff is turning to this mm. and um, as much as yeah it does look like a plastic bag it's it is fairly tough it's uh, it does rip um, if you um, I know uh, much like a, a plastic bag but um, yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely do that. That would be quite interesting, um, especially as I have one with me. Um, that's just been in the uh, in the garage for about struth since like lockdown started. Which one? Because this was one seven thousand. 
Uh, no, I think this was like halfway through one when I got a uh, fourth element face mask uh, and it came in this and I thought, ooh, I'll hold on to that because that's interesting uh, and now I have an actual purpose for it. There, there we you go. go. You must have known, <laughs> mate. You must. Are you Emily? Really? Are you, no, are you no. secretly, are you catfishing me, Mark? No, or no, yourself? I hate... I hate Bobbit Worms. Um. <laughs> no, Bobbit Worm Love, hashtag. Blech. Blech. Bobbit Worm. Uh, all right, swiftly moving on. That's going to be an awesome video, so wait for that in about three oh, months' time. I oh. just I just had a great idea. Uh -oh. I should try and, I'll try and commission someone to do like a Bobbit Worm puppet, and that can be our little our little friend um, who joins us new, in our videos. No, that's going to be the new Simply Scuba mascot. We'll get rid of Scuba Dude and we'll have the Bobbit Worm a stuffed bobbit worm. Oh. We'll say we'll say goodbye to Bruce. No, uh, don't and, say and we'll get we'll, we'll get a twelve foot long bobbit worm. <laughs> Bruce is irreplaceable. We cannot replace <laughs> Bruce. We we went out of our way to get him back. We did. I like the way you said we. Uh, yeah, yeah, I drove like did. two I hours to go it get him. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough of the bobbit worm disgustingness. Question number four <laughs> is from a stranger. I've never heard of him before. RV Billy sounds a bit dodgy. Who? Yeah, yeah no, I never heard of like the guy. A dodgy fella. He goes. <laughs> anyway, he says I rock the Scuba Pro G2 with air integration and uh -huh. a Sunto Zoop Novo as a backup. Now I'm yep. biting the bullet and investing in a new first and second stage, either the A700 <laughs> or the G260, nice. or a cheaper regular for my bailout. That's uh, the reason why I want a new one. I'll buy a new primary for myself. Uh, and use my current setup Mark 11 with this C350 uh, for my mm. bailout and then buy the A700 or whatever. Um, so what should I do, Mark and Sean? Help me spend my money. So he wants a new rig. Mm -hmm. uh, I would personally say go for a Terek. Or does he want a new guy <laughs> computer? Buy, buy both. No, he wants obviously... No, he's, he's got a G2. No, no, he needs, the, um, <laughs> he needs a Terek and then he needs the Petrol 2 for his other arm. <laughs> And, uh, and a nerd. Uh, yeah, he needs a nerd, and then one, he, he needs the uh, peregrine for his ankle. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Just to see how the decompression differs. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's all science, baby. It's all science. Anyway, help him out. Help him out. Um, I mean, the A700 is a beautiful um, second stage. Uh, comes with a Mark 25, and um, yeah, you. That each of them are like hand built because the uh, the second stage is uh, chrome plated brass. Uh, they have to like hand build every single one, so they're all ever so slightly different. Um, I've serviced them, I've used them. They are lovely, lovely regulators. Uh, incredibly tough, lovely performance, very smooth breathe. Uh, so you can't go far wrong. G two sixty is a proper workhorse of a uh, of a second stage. Uh, I was very close in buying one of those um, just because I like that kind of industrial look. Um, they do have that metal bezel, which does make them tough. Um, the performance won't be as good as the 700, uh, but obviously the price is going to reflect that. Mm -hmm. uh, the G260 is ambidextrous. Uh, if you do need to uh, change where the hose is routed in, um, if you're using it for a primary or for your uh, for your bailout, shouldn't really matter unless you really want to uh, to change the uh, the hose routing. Um, if you've got the money, go for the A700. It is just a nicer regulator. Um, and it's it's a metal body as well, so it would do better in colder waters as well. It acts as a better heat sink. Um, or yeah, G260, can't go far wrong. They've brought out a new version, the uh, the Carbon Black Tech. You now have Black Tech versions of both the A700 and the G260 now. Um, so it has that sort of carbon fiber front cover, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, G260, just double check the uh, the first stage that comes with it um, because you can either get it with like the, the Mark 17 or the uh, the Mark 25, um, or maybe even the Mark 20 as well, or even the 19. The 19 oh, kind of cool new, new one. Uh, the 19 is basically a diaphragm version of the Mark 25, um, which is worth uh, sort of considering, but... Uh, Either way, they're all good regulators. And again, it's it's scuba pro, so you can't go far wrong. Cool. Or buy both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want and us to buy Apex. You want us to help spend your money, RV Billy. Buy both. Mm. And a Terek. Yeah. <laughs> and a nerd. And a peregrine. And a petrol yeah. too. 
Yeah. Um, guys, if you've had a similar scenario where you were looking at the A700 or the G260, uh, which one did you go for and why? Let's help out uh, RV Billy in the comments below. So the next question, young Mark Mark, is from Danny Holden. He says, hi guys. Hello, Danny. Uh, can you decide between, uh, <laughs> this is quite a funny one. So can you decide between what the brand of these products are? Is it Tausch Sport? Have I said that right? Is it Tausch? Yeah, it's German. Yeah, Tausch Sport or Oshima? Uh, only one video has the Oshima in the title in the video. Basically, yeah, so. It, it, it's one of those things. They're basically the same brand, aren't they, it's, Mark? Yeah, it's it's it, more the the distributor and how it's set up on our system. Yeah. So all of the all of the gear will be branded as Oshiyama, um, but because the like distributor is put as Tausch Sport uh, on our like computer system, it comes up with Tausch Sport. So. Um, yeah, but does yeah. it really matter? No. Well, this one of the, I think it's one of those <laughs> things where, where you, you do the intro, you call it Oshima, and I'm like, okay, I need to do the back end, I need to like, take a look at the product and all that sort of thing. Yeah, then obviously it, it comes up with Tausch Sport, so then I have to go Tausch Sport. So it's listed as yeah. Tausch Sport, but then you say Oshima, but it doesn't matter because you're looking at the product, not what the actual, I'm not going to buy this because it's not called Oshima, whatever, <laughs> Oshima. Tausch Sport, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, we. Um, I'm trying to think of another example. We um, we had it where Sunto bought. Um, I can't remember the name of the the company, but they they bought and then distributed things. So it was like branded up as whatever the brand was, but on our system because we were buying it from Sunto, it, it had it as a Sunto product. Yeah. Uh, it's just like oh, it's just, the, the sticker comes off. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, Tausch Sport. I mean, Tausch is like German for dive or scuba or something. Um, but yeah, I think the actual brand is Oshiyama. Oshiyama. A lot of or people Oshiyama. are thinking that the Tausch Sport um, slash Oshiyama are also our own brand. Um, they're not. We don't own them. I think no, we've got. No. I don't. I think we. I don't know if anyone else sells them in the UK. I think we've just got the or with a main they're, dealer for them. I think that's the. That's it, isn't it? Uh, it's just, yeah, we, we're looking for a sort of interesting brands and if we see something interesting that someone might uh, sort of want, we, we invest in it. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, they do exist. It's just they're not a, a big, big, big brand. Yeah. Um, you'll probably see them in quite a few dive centers, but um, no, they're, they're not a huge, they're just like smaller accessories, basically. But that's what we want to invest in. That's the, the that's yeah. the future of Simply Scuba, where it's all well and good us having all the, the Scuba Pros and the Suntos and the the Mares and all the uh, all the other bits, which I don't think we have them at the moment, but yeah, it's all paperwork at the moment. All the stuff, I literally, all the stuff I just listed, I just realized oh, no. we don't even have in stock at the moment because yeah, back-end paperwork, contracts. It's, it's complicated it changing really is. businesses. <clears throat> I never knew, I never thought it would be. I thought, oh, we'll just swip. All you got to do is change the, uh, the, 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 what, the, the company number over from that six digit to another six. No, apparently not. That's not how it works. Yeah, like, like changing your email on Instagram or something. You just hit delete and then add new email. Yeah. There you go. No, Happy days. No, no but it's really not complicated than that. Um, but yeah, you know, so we, we are investing in smaller brands. Hence why we've got, we carry more Zeagle and we've got mm. more, or, or more Bear as well. We're getting into that. Yeah. Not necessarily unknown. They're popular in other areas, but not necessarily in the, in the UK. So it's something that we're striving. Um, mm. to work towards as we were basically a new we're a new company with a, an old data not an old database yeah, but like old platforms <laughs> yeah. yeah whatever anyway let's swiftly move on to question number six uh, mm -hmm. so this is traveling teacher tales that they left this comment on one of the ask marks over on our instagram page mm -hmm. it's a very cool uh, interesting question do you think that scuba instructors based in Tropical climates have much uh, have much longevity, 20 plus years now. Considering the regular ble uh, the regular bleaching, diminish diminishing biodiversity, and the rising sea temperatures. Mm. Um, yes, I would yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's. Yeah, we, we are seeing it more and more. But on on the flip side of it, you you take an example like the Red Sea where due to a reduction in tourism they they actually saw marine life numbers 
going back up um, because there wasn't all this boat traffic and people in the water mm -hmm. um, or nearly as many as there used to be because people weren't allowed to travel um, then yeah all the uh, all the big sort of fish and all that stuff it all started to come back um, so Yes and no. I think we are still, they're still going to be uh, sort of diving in these areas. Uh, you might see them shift a little bit, um, sort of further from uh, like bleached areas where mm. we'll hopefully see new areas uh, sort of starting to open up. Um, but yeah, it is an interesting question, um, sort of trying to work out what it will be like in 20 years time, because even since I've started diving, you can notice a, a big change in uh, sort of the color and that's all you ever hear from like the old divers who were diving in like the 70s and the 80s they go back to the red sea and they're like oh yeah it, all, it used to be so much more colorful um here so yeah well, when, it is interesting and it is sad i was going to say when they went diving though they probably jump in the water and they couldn't get through the water because there was such a, the amount of fish as well in life <laughs> so much more there well, a lot of it, there, there was a picture and um, oh, I can't remember the name of the film. I think it was the, the Red Sea Diving uh, Club or something uh, with Chris Evans. Finding Nemo. Yeah, it was. I saw <laughs> that. Yeah, when they were sm yeah. uh, smuggling people, weren't they? That's it. And um, and yeah, he was like one of the first few people to go to like the Camel Dive Club um, out in um, uh, Sharm El Sheikh. And, um, and yeah, that, it was just like a shack, just a building. Um, and that was the dive center. Now it's huge and, and there are so many other dive centers there and roads and all this stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, back in the day, it was, yeah, you got to get there by camel. Um, that's pretty cool, man. That's a pro that's yeah. proper adventure, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Or isn't it? You just get an Uber <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you, you still got to walk from the camel down to, um, uh, to the marina, but that's not that far. Why isn't there not a camel that you can put your gear on and then there, there the are cam camels? Well, then I'm you... sure if you paid the right amount of money, they'd take your gear down, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure they the do. Answer. I guess only time will tell. Yeah, um, oh, I mean, the talk, it'll, it'll change as well. So, like, you know, where people, you know, so I don't know, take the Great Barrier Reef, people that go around the Great Barrier Reef teaching scuba or whatever. Um, mm. Obviously, if they make restrictions, but then they'll probably open up something else. So, it's just a case of them adapting their workload to, yes, you want to go to the Great Barrier Reef, but, you know, we're going to have to take you to this artificial reef or some, you know, there's, there's going to be, or, yeah. or a different area that's not being affected, but it's not going to have the amount of, or shouldn't really have the amount of level of tourism there. You know, they'll, they'll probably mm. do restrict, or well, they need to do restrictions on that sort of thing. Cause it would be a shame to have all this marine life come back for only to get basically wiped out again. There's mm. got to be a, a finer line I think needs to be tread, but you know, other countries, you know, the, the diving scene in the UK, hopefully is going to be booming this year. So where people would normally go to the UK, uh, sorry, Egypt or the Red Sea or whatever, you know, they're going to be going to their local quarries or, you know, their local beach or whatever. So again, mm. it's, it's, it's just adapting, um, yeah. you know, obviously the tropical, again, you, you might be a dive master or, you know, you might spend your summer out in the Red Sea and then obviously come home or whatever. Um, if so, let us know your thoughts and what your plans are. Are you going to start teaching if you can in the, in the UK? Have you, have you thought about that? That that again. That's yeah. Just adapting your adapting your plan to to what's going on in the world. Let us know in the comments. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so that normally would be it, but we have the best bonus question I think ever. Um, it's from Danny Holden again. Uh, he left mm -hmm. this comment on April Q and A of 2019. Um, Whoa. Yeah. So it was what two three years ago this this q a that's when we used what, to do them we once doing? a month yeah yeah I was we gonna say, were we doing q a's Whoa. it was once once in a blue moon when you know we had some time to do it um, <laughs> but yeah it's crazy anyway it says hi sean because he actually used the hashtag ask sean so thank you for that uh, <laughs> And he says, do you think, uh, do you think giveaway pogs, e.g. Tazos, if you can remember them. Tazos. Were, uh, tazos, yeah, were just as good as buying official pogs. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Mm. Uh, so yeah, my view, I'm guessing at some point during that video, I should have really checked it beforehand. We spoke about Tazos and pogs, Mark. 
Yeah, um, yeah, I think so. And uh, do do I think they're as good? That no, Tazos were great because they were free. And you, do you remember when you used to get that, Mark? You used to get toys yeah. in your crisp packets. Yeah, yeah, but Don't they get... were they were definitively like you got good ones, and then you just got the rubbish ones that just lost their um, their like color around the edges really yes. quickly. Yes, and. Was it Pogs that had the little cutouts around the edge that you could like sandwich them together? No, that's that Tazos. Ta Tazos. Tazos, that was Tazos. Tazos were the ones where you could play you can play Pogs with it. So you'd have to use your Pog Sammer, but then you used to it's like almost like a, a poor man's connect and then you can like yeah. build stuff out of it. Yeah. Like, I used to build like dinosaurs and stuff because I used to have loads of them because I used to eat crisps. <laughs> lots and lots of crisps. Thanks, Mum. But you had to but you had to stack them up. Was that the game? I don't know. I, I, There's I have so vague many. vague memories of like 1994 or whenever it was when, yeah, I, you had to like stack them up and then we like threw them and whatever you not, I can't remember. There's like, there I was all, what the all, game was. Every playground had a different version of playing with Tazos, playing with Pogs. But anyway, <laughs> do I think that they're as good as buying official Pogs? I think official Pogs are better than Tazos, but Tazos have a nostalgic touch mm -hmm. to them and I think that's where it is um, very similar to Pogs but I think uh, what's the word value of money should we say is probably more mm -hmm. on the because because you know people kept their shinies their Pog yeah. shinies mate they're worth loads of money um, and I actually <laughs> did before filming try to find my Pogs because I've got them I've even oh. got Pog the game no. but I couldn't <laughs> find it I thought it, I thought it would be with all my board games and stuff but they're not so I'm guessing they're either around my parents house or they're up in the loft <laughs> Um, so I'll find them. Maybe, all, maybe all we can do that. The like, we'll do a pod the like teenagers watching are just, they have no idea what we're teenagers. talking about right now. Ah, uh, well. All, all the 20 something year olds, they, they have no idea what we're talking about. I'm seeing my nieces, they're in their 20s. Do they? They won't know what pogs are. Pogs, Unless yeah. I inflicted it on them. <laughs> but anyway, Tazos, no, they're not as good or they're, they're not as grand as Pogs, but they have a nostalgic value to them and they are cool. Right. Um, <laughs> that's my answer to that. But yeah, see, I told you, complete left turn, flip 180, <laughs> Tokyo drifting question. Nothing about scuba diving, Tazos and Pogs. Yeah, 1993, 1994, whenever it was. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I'm surprised, I've, remember. Not I'm surprised they've not come back. Because uh, they have enough. a tendency, they have, things do have a tendency of coming back. So, so you want people to mass produce small discs of what were they plastic, um, yeah. <laughs> and then hand them out for free in every single packet of crisps around the world. <laughs> and obviously, they came. You didn't want the um, you didn't want the plastic Tazo to get the crisp dust. So they were themselves uh -huh. in a little plastic bag. Yeah, single, yeah, single use. use. That non-recyclable film that you yeah. can't recycle. No. Uh, that make them wooden, wooden Tazos. Yeah, the, individually engraved. Yeah, that would be right. See, the pods were okay because they were they were, um, they were cardboard. Other than the were actual, they cardboard? the shinies. Yeah, the shine like the slammers. Sorry, they were uh, pl obviously big solid plastic. But yeah, the. Um, Pogs themselves are made out of cardboard, so that's not too bad. Just do a cardboard okay. version. Yeah. Make, make them out of recycled McDonald's toys and yeah. just melt them down into... Well, they don't... Toys. Apparently, they don't do um, plastic toys anymore, McDonald's. Well, they're aiming not to. Okay. It's been so, a yeah. since I've had a Happy Meal, so yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, <laughs> the thing is, like with the Happy Meals and stuff, like apparently it's paper and cardboard toys, but that's going to ruin it because obviously how greasy their food is. You're going to get it out. It's going to be like just greasy cardboard all mangled up I in this did, box. I did watch an interesting video yesterday and it was all about why McDonald's ice cream machines are always broken. Okay. And that's that's interesting. Well, Apparently there are yeah. lots of conspiracy theories, but this guy's like delved into it. And basically it's all just um, so that McDonald's can uh, look after whoever makes the, um, or whoever services the ice cream machines. Okay. Um, yeah, they're basically designed to be as complicated as possible, even though it's the same uh, like same manufacturer who does all the other fast food chain uh, machines. But because McDonald's have their own very specific one machine, and yeah, during the like cleaning process, 
if it's not exactly perfect, it just like fails, but it doesn't tell the, um, the, the guy working the machine and all it basically does is basically say, call a technician and the technician makes like hundreds of thousands of dollars every time they come round. Um, so yeah, it's all just a, like a little kickback to their like, not sister company, but yeah. And you're like, ah, mm. that's why. There we go. So who would have thought guys, Ask Mark 24 <laughs> started with scuba diving questions and it ends with the McDonald's uh, milkshake, ice cream, whatever machine. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Mate, this is this is what you guys and girls wanted, so <laughs> congratulations. Um, but that is it. Do you remember Pogs? Do you remember Tazos? Uh, yeah. Let us know in the comments below. Do you think Tazos <laughs> are more valuable than Pogs? Or is it the other way around? I'd love to hear all your thoughts in the comments. Um, and apologies if you don't know what the heck we've been talking <clears throat> about for the past, what, five, 10 minutes? Yeah, um, there was also one which was like a, a plastic, stick with two rounded edges and they had like cartoon characters on them. Do you remember those? No. Or it was just that, yeah, maybe that was just a, a regional thing where I was from. Yeah, they, they were like small like sticks, flat sticks, a bit like a lollipop stick. Okay. Um, but they were, they were plastic and they had like rounded edges and they would have like different cartoon characters printed on them. I can't remember what you did with them, but that just sprung back into mind thinking about Tazos and stuff. Like my um, angle. Yeah. I ain't got a Scooby, the, mate. I don't know what they are. The nineties, the nineties were a weird time. <laughs> yeah, but um, there's, there's a bit of a weird, like obviously we, we are similar, we're in the same generation box, but with the, the age difference between us, it's a couple of years. So yeah, I'm kind of at the tail end and you're kind of at the beginning. So we would have been introduced to the same stuff, but I would either be, you would be too young for it or I would be too old for it sort of thing. I don't know. Yeah. So there's, there's crossover things, but then, yeah, there's things that I would know about that maybe you wouldn't, and there's things that you wouldn't know. Anyway, let's, let's stop blabbering on, <laughs> do the outro. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, queries, or even corrections, uh, let us know down in the comments below. If you do have any specific questions, then try to use the hashtag Ask Mark or indeed Ask Sean. Uh, if you want to ask either of us a question, just makes it a lot easier for us to find. Uh, don't forget to check out simplyscuba.com because we do sell all sorts of amazing scuba diving equipment. Uh, and more and more stuff is getting added every single day. Uh, if you're struggling to choose between two specific things, then of course let us know and we'll do our best to uh, reply in the comments but if it's worth more of a uh, sort of a discussion uh, we'll put it in uh, next friday or monday if you're listening to it as a podcast the uh, the ask mark show um yeah thank you for watching and or listening and safe nice. diving uh before i end this sorry mark i'm throwing another little spanner in there our <laughs> sister company web togs who i do bits mm -hmm. for will eventually mm -hmm. be doing bits for um they've just released uh, a bottle like a sig metal bottle yeah um mm -hmm. and it's to help out the charity two minute litter pickup which our company is involved in um so if you want to help out uh, a charity that you know goes around the coasts uh, and or anywhere i think really don't know it doesn't matter where yeah. it is they they collect litter litter picking so they, they encourage you guys guys and girls to do a two minute litter picker but basically they've got this limited edition bottle um so if you want to help out the charity there and you're after a new bottle um head over to there i'll put the link to that in the comments below i'll pin it down below so then you guys can check it out get yourself a nice new metal bottle so again no plastic to it uh, i think it's made by stig or they're doing uh sig yeah. i believe um i believe it's those guys so it's all yeah it's all, all, all high-end quality gear but then again you're buying this bottle and it goes to charity as well it's going to help clear some litter out off the uk streets and I, I don't know if they do it globally yeah yeah is in, it global? Uh, well when i was in australia what did they have was it pick up pick up three where you yeah. like sort of pick up three items of litter. Uh, two minute is just like, yeah, if you're out walking the dogs, um, yeah, just kind of like look at your clock and just go, oh yeah, two minutes, just kind of look around and anything you see, um, just kind of like pick it up, put it in a uh, bag and then throw it in the trash because no one else is going to. Um, yeah, it's just a, a small effort and I do it. Um, 
yeah, I did see one that I almost um, that I almost bought, but I uh, I got distracted. And they make a one of those litter pickers out of recycled um, That's cool. marine plastic. Uh, I'll see if I can find that, and I'll uh, I'll let you know so you can link that down yeah. below as well. Pin that down below as well. And again, if there's yeah. any recycled cool things that you guys and guys have seen, put it in the links. Uh, the link won't go live straight away in the comments. We have to approve it. But if we think the product's cool, yeah, we'll we'll make it go live, and yeah, we'll see if we can get some more things. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention that as well because that's a nice little thing mm. that's connected to us as well as a charity you know so helps spread the love a little bit so yeah definitely go check that out anyway yeah so you got to say you a little bit again you've got to say thanks right. for watching not not all of it but yeah thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving stay classy scuba divers and you can buy this t-shirt as well oh yeah buy the t-shirt <laughs>